This film introduces the visual designer for Raspberry Pi product with a simple flushing LED project. Select the flowchart option from the new project wizard and then choose Raspberry Pi as the family and the Pi 3 as the controller. When you complete the new project wizard, you will find that the Raspberry Pi component has been placed on the schematic for you and a blank flowchart has been created for your program. Our first task now is to add the LED and button to the project. In Visual Designer, right click on the project tree and select the Add Peripheral command. Now switch to Breakout Peripherals and then double click on one of the LEDs to add it to our project. Repeat the process to add a button to the project and then close the dialog. If you switch to the schematic, you'll see the peripherals have been auto placed for you. The wiring might look a little odd because the connections are made by terminals. Any two terminals with the same name are connected together. Since we are going to control the LED and button from the GPIO lines of the Raspberry Pi, we need to make sure that we have connected the peripherals to the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi. We do this simply by changing the terminal name on the peripheral, but you may need the Raspberry Pi pinout to choose a general purpose GPIO pin to connect to. Having connected up the electronics, we need to write the controlling program, so switch back to the Visual Designer module. The beauty of Visual Designer is that you can expand the peripherals in the project tree to access their methods. For example, if we expand the LED peripheral, we can simply drag and drop the on method into the loop routine. The button doesn't have any expandable methods because the only thing we need to know is whether it is being pressed and for that we have what we call a sensor function. The sensor function for the button will return true if it is pressed and false if it isn't. If we drag across from the button onto the flowchart, we'll actually get a decision box that will allow us to split our code into two paths depending on whether the button is being pressed. At the moment, we are constantly testing if our button is being pressed and turning the LED on if it is. However, we still need to tell the program what to do if the button is not pressed. We want to turn the LED off, so drag and drop the off method into some free space alongside the other routine. Now click on an output node on the decision block, and then click on the input node at the top of the off routine. Complete the program flow by connecting from the bottom of the off routine to the main loop. That's it. Press the play button to run the simulation and test out the program. When you click on the button, the LED should light up, and when you release, the LED should turn off. The last step would be to program the physical Raspberry Pi. You first need to configure the Pi for use with Proteus, which is discussed in a separate movie. Assuming this is done, you go to the Program Setting dialog, select RPI SSH as the interface, and specify either the IP address or the hostname of the device. Then hit the program button to automatically upload your firmware to the physical device.